With how crazy competitive the gaming industry has gotten, every little edge you can get over your opponent is a must have. Well, that is where the ROG Harp Ace comes in to help you achieve that. The Harp is a wireless lightweight gaming mouse that has been partnered up with Aim Labs to help you dial in the perfect settings to fit your mouse and your play style and master your aim. But before we get into all of the Aim Labs features and all of that, let's quickly go over the mouse itself first, because of course that is the main focus. You're not just getting software, you're getting a mouse. Now, the heart isn't cheap at around $150, but it is in line with some of the competitors' high-end gaming wireless mice. So if you are in that high-end market, then the Hark Ace is something to take a look at, which will go over all of the features. Now, along with the mouse, you do get a few extra goodies, like the additional mouse feet and a grip tape, along with some others, which is a nice addition. Now, for the design of the Hark, it's very simplistic, but of course, if it's not broken, then don't fix it so I'm very happy with the design and it actually fits very comfortably in my hand. Now it might not be for everybody but I do believe that it will fit majority of hands whether it's large or too small just depends on your grip style but because it's also ambidextrous it's also fit for lefties. Unfortunately you just only get the thumb buttons on the left side not the right side. Now because of this shape pretty much any grip style would actually work with this mouse. Uh, for me I do have a more of a hybrid claw palm style grip and it worked perfectly for that but if a fingertip style grip as well it's going to work no matter what especially because it's so light now the Acer does have a slightly textured matte finish which does feel nice in your hand and then also because of that it does reduce the fingerprints by a lot so you don't have to worry about your mouse getting all smudgy and everything so I do like that now like a lot of other lightweight mice the harp doesn't have any unnecessary cutouts or anything like that some of them you get half of a mouse really but with the ace it's a solid shell and that doesn't do anything towards the weight so I can just imagine if they do cut out a lot of the pieces how light this mouse could actually be but now even though it's so light the chassis does feel very solid and I didn't feel any flex or creaking at all when giving it a bunch of pressure so even when slamming it on the table it doesn't sound like it'll break or cheap or anything like that now again it's lightweight but you do feel the quality for the mouse now what makes it even more impressive is that it only weighs in at 55 Four grams. I recently did my review on the Razer Viper V2 Pro and that was already very very light at 58 grams but and, and also had a like slight cutouts not, not too much but I mean this is a solid shell and it's also larger and it's four grams lighter <laughs> so great job on <laughs> Asus really did a great job with uh, the weight of this mouth and again Getting all of the cutouts and everything, I can just imagine how light this mouse would actually be. Now moving on to the left side, you do have a, the same slightly textured grip there, but you do also have a very shallow vertical lines that does add a bit of extra grip. Now it's not overly deep or anything like that. I hardly ever really notice that. So you don't have to worry about it hindering or anything like that for your feel. Now if you wanted to, you can also actually stick some of those included grip tape here which looks really nice as well I didn't stick anything on it because it's just a review sample so I don't want to do anything too crazy but uh, you can stick it on the left side the right side and then also for the two front buttons as well and because of the graphics that have it actually looks pretty cool as well so you can spice up your mouse a bit and that's something that I haven't really seen on the competition uh, sometimes they do add a bit of extra mouse feet and stuff but they never really add that much extra like grip tape especially something that has a bit of graphics on to make it a bit more unique so uh, I do actually like that very much but anyway just above where your thumb would rest and again there is enough space for your thumb don't have to worry about that you do get a two extruding thumb buttons that are nicely positioned and does have a decent feel to them I will say that the back button does have a bit of a mushy feel when pressing but it's actually not bad and it's a bit lighter to press as well now something that you have to really take a look in close is that in the front left side you do actually have the aim alert Labs logo there but you can't really see it because you do need a black light to actually see it glow where it's going to do that fluorescent uh, bluish glow to it so that's pretty cool not that I actually have a black light to actually test that but 
yeah, if you have one, <laughs> you can test it out. Now moving on to the right side, you do have the same grip as the left and also plenty space for your both your pinky finger and ring finger to rest comfortably. Because of the larger size, nothing has to be on top of the mouse or on the, the mouse pad or gliding along, so you do have enough space for all of your fingers. Now the Harpy does feature ROG's micro switches with a lifespan of over 70 million clicks. Now these are not optical switches like the Viper had. Some of the newer mice have optical switches. I'm not at that point where I can actually say that I feel a difference, but it is newer technology, so maybe it's a better, uh, but honestly, I didn't feel a difference, so I do think it should be fine. Now, they do feel fast and responsive with no travel delay. The buttons are also slightly curved towards the ends, but you don't actually feel that, and I don't think it should be a problem for most people. If you have very, very large hands, you might feel that, but it's just enough to cuddle your fingers kind of in there. As for the scroll wheel, it's a pretty standard scroll, nothing too crazy, but you do have a nice uh, subtle steps where you can actually feel them. And of course, you can also press the button in as well. And this is also the only part of the entire mouse that is RGB, so it does light up. It's nothing too crazy again, but it does let you know about the battery level, the DPI levels, and all of that. Now, taking a look underneath the heart, you do get a 5 PTFE glide pad that delivers a very smooth glide, and especially because how light this mouse is is just glides over your mouse pad i just need a bit better mouse pad for for here now you also get a two buttons uh, that is for your dpi and also for your bluetooth pairing as well as the connection switch that cycles between a bluetooth your 2.4 gigahertz wireless and also your wired mode You'll also get the ROG aim point sensor, which I believe is a custom PixArt PAW3395 or 99 optical sensor. So that's a great news. It's one of the top range sensors, so you don't have to worry about that. And it does have a max DPI of 36,000, an IPS of 650, and a max polling rate of only 1,000 hertz. Now, I actually would have expected higher but it's not really needed. Uh, you do go up to about 8,000 now, but uh, I haven't really seen any of the pros even go that high. But also, if you're not gonna go crazy high resolution and crazy refresh rates, it shouldn't really be a problem here. And then lastly, at the back, you do also have the caddy for your USB dongle. That's nice out of the way, and the dongle does sit nicely in there as well. It's not going to fall out even when you shake the mouse going crazy and everything. Now, even though you won't use the Bluetooth connectivity for gaming, it is still a very nice addition that they added if you only want to have a single mouse between multiple devices. For instance, my PC, my laptop, a tablet even, you do have that, which is very nice. And it's something that that the competition doesn't really add in the price range, which I do find quite interesting. I'm not sure why they don't add that really, because it's it's still handy to have, but yeah, I'm just glad that they actually added it with this one. So it's just an extra feature that you have. Now as for the sensor's liftoff distance, it's about one DVD, so extremely light, but you can go and also change that in the software. As for the battery life, it lasts around 80 to 90 hours, depending on the RGB for the scroll wheel, which does seem pretty accurate. Now I wasn't able to drain it completely because I don't use it 90 hours every time, uh, but it did last a very, very long time. I'm still using it now without needing to charge it once. Now, the Harpy AC utilizes uh, the Armor Crate software to customize all of the settings. Everything except uh, the left mouse button can be modified in uh, the first uh, tab, including uh, the activation of uh, macros, sending keyboard commands, and even hiding all of your open uh, windows uh, through the stealth uh, mode. The performance uh, tab is uh, the most critical section, as uh, this is where you can make all of your necessary adjustments suggested by AIM Labs. In this tab, you can set your DPI, your polling rate, angle of snapping behavior, and your acceleration. The mouse can store up to four DPI presets, and all of the settings can be saved in five different profiles. The RGB can also be adjusted with various presets and our colors for static lighting, and you can also calibrate it to work with different mouse surfaces. ASUS does give you also control over the mouse's power 
a management to prolong the battery life, how quickly it sleeps and all of that. To switch between a profile, simply hold down the DPI button and press one of the other four keys. Now then, we can finally get into the performance and the AIM Lab partnership. Now to be fair, anybody can actually go download the AIM Lab software from Steam for free. So it's not exclusively for this mouse. But as it was a partnership, I can imagine that there was a lot of data set behind to create the Harpy Ace. So it's definitely going to be useful. Now to be fair also, I'm not the best FPS player anymore. I don't play that much anymore. So this mouse won't make you a pro just because you have it. You will need to add a crazy amount of time practicing, which I don't really have, uh, but the AIMLAB software does make it easier to get the training in with a bunch of different scenarios for general FPS games or more focused to certain games like CSGO, Valorant, Apex, Call of Duty, and so on. It's honestly best just to give it a try yourself as there is just a bunch to actually go over, uh, but a nice feature to try out is the settings optimizer, which is a series of trials that takes around 30 minutes, which afterwards will give you the best settings for your mouse and also your playstyle. But you will still need to put in hours and hours to actually build up that skill, which I lost. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'll see what I can do to increase my accuracy and all of that in games. But now, of course, the main question, is the Harp Ace worth the $150 price tag? Well, it's hard to justify any mouse really at this price range, but looking at the competition, it does seem like it's a worthy competitor. The AIMA Labs partnership isn't the main focus of this mouse. It's free to use for everybody. You can even go download it and use it on your cheap wireless $5 mouse. So you do have that option. But anyway, overall, the mouse is actually very, very good. The sensor was very accurate. The wireless connectivity was great, even though I did have slight jittering here and there, but I do believe that was my laptop's memory running out uh, because I just have just a bunch of Chrome tabs open. So I think that was a problem there because it wasn't a problem on my PC. But also it was a comfortable in my hand, especially with the weight. But I can see that someone might have an issue because the bump here at the back is a bit tall. So it might be a bit uncomfortable for some, but honestly, I don't think it should be, but I just want to mention that. But overall, it's just a solid mouse with a hefty price tag. But if you are in that $150 price tag market, uh, then I do really, really think that this could be a great option to actually look at. Everything is solid, the mouse is solid, so yeah, overall, I can definitely recommend the Harpy Ace. The other thing is there's so many different options, but, and you can't unfortunately test all of them right in front of you. I wish I could actually do that as well. But overall, I would definitely recommend the Harpy Ace. But anyway, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, guys. I do hope you enjoyed. A big shout out to Asus of Argo sending the mouse over for review. If you guys want to get it for yourself, I will leave links in the video description. If you did like this video, please like, subscribe, and comment like always. And I'll check all of you next time. Cheers, guys.